Thank you very much. And I bring you a lot of peace and greetings from Ethiopia, uh, not from Utopia. <laughs> I know so many people dream about Utopia, but I am from Ethiopia. Uh, thank you so much. And something very difficult is to make sure that I maintain the level of energy which was going around this morning and early afternoon. It's so powerful, and you can't avoid feeling it. My name is Yetna Birsh, and I am very, very honored to be invited to this beautiful country. In my country, if you want to say somebody is beautiful, the expression we use is, he looks like Indian. And the same for the women. If you say you look like Indian, that's a compliment saying that you're beautiful. So you're beautiful. Uh, one thing that Debika didn't tell you is that I am a billionaire. Did she? No, she didn't. I'm a billionaire. And I'm going to tell you how I become a billionaire. I'm sure all of you are interested to know how I become a billionaire. Yes, and you want to become a billionaire. It's going to happen soon. Get ready to be a billionaire. Uh, I was born in my family as the first child. My mom got married when she was 12. And she gave birth to me when she was 14. That was considered a late delivery. And that's why I'm called Yetna Birsh, which means where have you been in my language? Because they expected me to arrive when she was 12 and a half or 13. She was late, a bit late. She got me when she was 14. When I was five, I won a lottery, which got me to be a billionaire. See, quite early. Some babies, we say the babies are lucky. They come with their own chances. So I come with my family with a lottery. In that lottery, the thing I won was called blindness. That's where I became blind. And for my family, that was not a very good gain. I heard somebody talking about deaf gain this morning, yeah? So they said it's not good. Because in my community, if a girl is born, her fate would be getting married at the age of 11 and 12 and bringing a dowry. And they said, oh, she's not going to bring a dowry because she's blind. Nobody wants to marry her. So I was taken to the city after two years and a half and saw a doctor who told me that I can never be sighted. They told me, you're going to continue. You're going to live blind. I said, that's OK. That blindness, which took me away from my community, get me into a path called education. I am the only girl in that community from that age, from that generation, who was able to get a, a school. <laughs> and believe me or not, I have some Indian roots, which I got from that school, because the director of our school was a lovely Indian Catholic nun called Sister Jacintha Mathieu. So I'm Indian. My mom was an Indian. So how I became a billionaire is that because there are more than one billion persons with disabilities. So a definition of a billionaire is somebody who has a billion, yeah? So I have a billion of you, and it's because of you that I'm a billionaire. <laughs> I have more than one billion persons with disabilities, friends who are facing the same challenge, who are overcoming them every day, who are making innovations to make life as interesting as possible for all of you, all of us. So that's why I say I'm a billionaire. And people say, oh my gosh. So you are a billionaire if you have a disability, because we're one, more than one billion, thanks to the World Health Organization. 
In my uh, career life, I have studied law. And one of the first things I have accomplished to do is establish the Ethiopian Center for Disability and Development, which is gradually getting into partnership with Enable India. And as a co-founder, our motto is Disability Inclusion in Action. So I'm so glad to be invited for the Inclusion Summit. And I wonder that why inclusion is becoming this difficult for people. Because in the older days, before the mobile phones come in, and before we get this, all these classes, people were very inclusive. Inclusion was a norm then. People were included. Now, when we have more layers in life, when we are being very much technology-oriented, we are being exclusive. We are excluding. And we are excluded. You know what? I am so happy to be blind. Because the first thing I have heard is that love is also blind. <laughs> Haven't you heard that? <laughs> so if blindness is something that love has opted to be, who else can refuse? And I was told that human beings are human beings. I want to preach you today to do a human doing. Yesterday, I was listening to Jerry White, who was slowly, slowly trying to transform from being, from doing to being. I am going to preach vice versa, from being to doing. If we say that human beings are inclusive, why don't we do inclusive? So from human being, from being inclusive to doing inclusive. From building accessible buildings. I enjoy this ramp, actually, this stage very well. And I was thinking, oh, African leaders need this stage because many of them die in power. They don't want to go. <laughs> there is even a joke that was done by Robert Mugabe. They asked him, sir, you were on power when Mandela was a guerrilla fighter. He said, yeah, 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 I was in power. Yeah, you were in power when he came uh, uh, into prison. Yeah, yeah, I remember. And yeah, you were also in power when uh, Mandela became a president. Mm, yeah, yeah, I remember he was a president. Yeah, you were also in power when Mandela won the Peace Prize. Mm, yeah, he also won it. And now you are in power when Mandela is dying. Yeah, you see, he passed away. When are you going to say goodbye to your people? And Mugabe answered, what? Where are they going to go? <laughs> Where are they going? Because he was not thinking of going. So if we really need people to be in power, we really need to make this world accessible. And the first step to make this world accessible is to open up our minds and embrace diversity. Then the buildings will be accessible. The first building which should be accessible is what? Our mindsets. That's the first building. I want to enter into your mind today, even though I have read a very powerful quote of Mahatma Gandhi, your beloved ancestor, saying that I don't let uh, people walk into my mind with their dirty feet. I want you to come into your, my mind with your clean feet thinking that inclusion is possible. And it was done ages ago. And why is my generation failing to do inclusion? Which is the easiest thing that my ancestors, your ancestors did it a while ago without mobile, without internet. So please, let's remove barrier and let's make inclusion a norm. As a trainer on disability, I was asked, and I let people ask questions without telling who they are. Because sometimes some questions are very stereotypic, and people do not want to be labeled. And one person asked me, because I have three beautiful girls. This morning, I heard Sue Hassani talking about that she's the third girl. I just had my third girl three months ago, and she's upstairs. So anyways, it's a joy if you have a three girls. 
So he asked me, how come you have all these beautiful girls without seeing? I asked, what do you mean? He asked, how come, how is sex possible for a blind person? That was the question behind. I told him, the only moment that everybody is blind about is called sex. <laughs> so, let's come with our fears and stigmas and table them in such amazing summits like this one. I'm so jealous and I'm trying to ask now a visa for inclusion summits to go to Ethiopia. But my call for all of you is make inclusion a norm and exclusion a taboo. And the way to do it is talk more about it, appreciate what you have, and please turn to your left and tell somebody sitting next to you, you're beautiful. Turn to your right and say you're beautiful. Yes, we're all beautiful. And we'll make inclusion a norm. Thank you so much. And let's make inclusion a norm. Thank you.